I've traded with 16 year old boys and then I've also traded with 50 or 60 year old people across the country, priests, teachers, I mean, you name it. They just like looked around my own house and said, what is the smallest thing and then what is the largest? So. The idea was the bobby pin for the house. My very first trade, I really did just post all over Facebook in different groups. One woman finally replied and said, great, I have a pair of earrings that I got for my birthday. I haven't worn them. I haven't taken them out of the packaging. I just don't want to wear them. And so she traded me my very first trade. I shipped the bobby pin, I got the earrings, and I found a woman who had four margarita glasses. Really, there are only two basic rules. Um, one is that I can't spend any money, so the whole point is to trade, so I can only trade one item for another item. Two is that I can't trade with anyone I know. So after that, I found a woman who had just bought a new vacuum. This was on Facebook Marketplace, and she was getting rid of her old one, and I offered her, instead of money, the margarita glasses. Once it was cleaned up, I looked through over a thousand trades until I found the right one. I then found somebody who was interested in the vacuum and they offered a snowboard. So they had like a garage full of pretty much like their teenage kids stuff. And they said that their teenager hadn't used the snowboard in a couple years. So they traded the snowboard. <laughs> I went a little bit into electronics, so I had like an Apple TV and some Bose headphones. Little note, Canon camera, battery grip, video light. And then I had someone offer me sneakers and it was interesting because I knew nothing about sneakers. But then there's also a lot of counterfeit and fraud associated with sneakers. So I was pretty nervous. I was really trapped for a long time with sneakers because of course anybody who wants sneakers, they just have more sneakers to trade. So at a certain point I was like, I don't want everything just to be shoes for shoes for shoes. So. Um, finally traded for an iPhone. From then, that's how I got into the cars. So that first iPhone for the red minivan, which was honestly so crazy because that was the first time where somebody really wanted to trade because they had found me through social media. She and her husband drove across the country with two minivans, the new one they had and the old one they were trading, which was just mind blowing. And that trade ended up being a little bit tough just because by the time it got there, the car pretty much had had its last leg. I am underneath the car, so the leak is red fluid. But I mean, honestly, it was, it was amazing because it was such a big step. I found a guy who knew a mechanic and for him, this was the best trade because he got a really good deal out of this minivan that was broken down. A woman reached out, she lived across the country, she was really interested in the Mini Cooper car that I had, and she said she had gotten this diamond necklace, it was in her family. We picked out a bunch of jewelers all around her city, and they appraised it for around like $18,000. And then when it got to the city, I started to trade it, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna go get this checked out and just see what the true value is in my city, thinking that it might be worth a little bit more in San Francisco. And so we were looking at the appraisal like for insurance purposes, they tell you it's worth 20,000, but if somebody were to buy it back from you, they aren't gonna buy it for near as much. So they were offering like 2,000 and it was a mistake. And you know, I think you just, have to think about the journey and that I started with a bobby pin. During quarantine, I was watching a lot of YouTube and came upon his video and was so inspired and quickly Googled, realized no one else had done it. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna put my spin on it. The trading to me feels special because it feels like maybe with like a little bit of craziness in your head and willingness to do this, you can also make it happen. And I feel like, especially on TikTok resonates with people because everyone is looking around their own house and saying like, oh, I could do this. Or like, oh, this feels so positive that there's so many people that are willing to trade. And it's just almost the exact opposite of like what it feels like right now in the real world. One of the best things is to see everybody who started to do it. So if you type in 
trade me project into TikTok or YouTube or Google. There's hundreds of people doing this now, which I think is the most special part. So some people are trading college tuition. Some people are trading for a car or a laptop or their first phone. And I think that part is, is amazing too, that it's like everyone's setting up to have their own, you know, item that they think is special. And yeah, I, I've loved watching other people's journey, sometimes even more than my own. A question I get all the time is, what's the time frame? And I don't really know, you know, I'm just gonna keep on. And as long as it takes, I'm ready to put in the time. And there's nothing, there's nothing in my way except myself now. And